Hey everyone, it is Finn here, and in today's video, I'll be predicting the best player for every team at Euro 2021. And guys, it is finally here, Euro 2021, where there is a whole month of football pretty much every single day. It really is like Christmas to football fans. I mean, I am so excited for this tournament. 24 nations made up of some brilliant individuals, but who will be the best individual for each nation at Euro 2021? That is what I'll try to predict in today's video. Now, obviously, we're going to start off with Group A, and the first team I'm going to be talking about is going to be Turkey. Turkey. Now, I do feel like Yilmaz is going to be most people's favorites to be the best player for Turkey at this tournament. But to be honest, I'm going to go for the likes of Ander. Yes, Yilmaz has been brilliant this season, both for Turkey and Lul in the French League. But I'm going to go for Ander, purely because looking at that opening game, that 3-0 loss versus Italy, I think the whole attacking dynamic of this Turkish team changed once Ander came off, off of the bench. I think Yilmaz looked brilliant when he was on the ball, but Turkey didn't get too many attacking chances. But as I said, that all changed once Ander came off onto the field and I think he's going to cause the most chaos for Turkey um, in Euro 2021. I feel like he's going to be their best player, to be honest. Might not be their top goal scorer, but I think he's definitely one to watch. Now, obviously, the second team is going to be a team I've just mentioned in the likes of Italy. And can I be honest? I mean, Cialini was by far my man of the match for that game. I mean, he, I mean, his play is like so sweet. I can see why Suarez bit him now. But Cialini was brilliant. There's so many good players to watch, like the likes of Immobile, obviously Berardi. I think all those players looked brilliant in that game. But my player to watch, my best player for Italy for this tournament who I predict it's going to be Insigne 19 goals and 7 assists obviously for Napoli this season when he plays for Italy he has been brilliant I mean you wouldn't assume he's 30 years old with the amount of energy and pace he still has not just because he looks like he's about 12 years old with his height but at the end of the day Insigne he was pretty good his shooting accuracy wasn't 100% versus Turkey but at the end of the day I feel like his pace is going to cause a lot of defensive problems for the opposition I think Insigne was brilliant in that game and will be Turkey's uh, or will be Italy's best player in the competition obviously going on to the third team it is going to be Wales and I hate to be that guy but it is going to be Mr. Golfer himself Mr. Tiger Woods Gareth Bale look I hate it because it is like the obvious one and although Gareth Bale's numbers for Wales as of late haven't been incredible in terms of assists and goals when he does play he normally is the difference maker he causes a lot of defensive struggles for the opposition he's a very tough man to defend he was brilliant for Spurs this season obviously picked up later towards the end of the season for Spurs but at the end of the day when it comes to the Welsh national team Gareth Bale just steps up a whole nother level I think he's got so much passion for this Welsh national team I genuinely think that Gareth Bale probably is the safe bet as a player to watch for them this competition I'd love to go for Moore, the Cardiff City striker, because his numbers look brilliant. But I do just feel like it is going to be Gareth Bale. And finally, the final team in Group A is going to be Switzerland. And I've gone for the likes of Harris Safarovic, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Now, lots of people are going to go for Shakiri, who, yes, is playing for Liverpool, has won a Premier League, multiple Champions Leagues. But Safarovic is actually looking really decent at the moment. A player who I don't think many people know about. He is the main striker for Benfica, scored 22 goals and 7 assists this season. And his numbers for Switzerland aren't bad either. I really do believe Safarovic is going to be the best player for Switzerland this season. I don't think it's going to be Shakiri, but I could be proven wrong. Now going on to Group B, we're going to start off with the likes of Denmark. And I've got my first goalkeeper in this list. I think Denmark's player of the tournament is going to be Schmeichel. Because Kasper Schmeichel, I mean, he's just brilliant overall. Great season for Leicester City. And I've gone for him because of that 2018 World Cup. I think he was their best player at that tournament. In terms of just a proper goal stopper. I think that Schmeichel is absolutely brilliant. I think he's going to be a really tough defensive wall to get through. I can see him picking up at least three clean sheets in this tournament to be honest. That is why I believe he'll be Denmark's player to watch. The next team is going to be Finland. Once again, one of those teams where it's a pretty obvious choice in my opinion. It is going to be Timu Puki, who yes, when he played in the Premier League with Norwich, wasn't that brilliant. But it was a major part of both of their campaigns getting promoted back to the Premier League. More than a 20 goal a season kind of striker is the reason why Finland are in the Euros themselves with his goals for them. I think he's a brilliant striker overall. Whether he can do it on the big stage, we'll have to see whether he can do it at the Euros. But I do think he'll be Finland's 
best player. Moving on, we've got the likes of Belgium. Now this, it's a tough nation. Obviously, Group B stands for Belgium. I believe they 100% will win this group. But they've got so many exciting players to watch. They've got so many world-class players. It's tough to choose a player to watch, but I'm going to go for Romelu Lukaku. Obviously, as a Manchester United fan, it breaks my heart that we let a player like him go. I still don't know how we, we did it. I mean, we said he wasn't a good player for United. But at the end of the day, I think he still scored like 17 goals in one of the Premier League seasons. I don't know why we gave him away and we thought Martial was a good option but you know what looking at Lukaku will be the player to watch for Belgium at this tournament brilliant striker Belgium's all-time top goal scorer of all time the second most goals in Serie A this season after only Cristiano Ronaldo it just has to be Romelu Lukaku as a player to watch and the final team in Group B is going to be Russia now Russia obviously on the attacking front were really really good in the 2018 World Cup and I'm going to go for the likes of Alexander Golovin I think he's a really good attacking midfielder overall can also play as kind of a right wing position if necessary was really really decent for Monaco this season and as I said his attacking ability in the 2018 World Cup really really impressed me and I can see him doing the same for Russia in the 2021 Euros now going on to Group C we're going to start off with the likes of Netherlands now Netherlands it's a tricky one because they've got so many really Really good players obviously lots of big names are missing out of this team like Donny van der Beek and um, obviously Virgil van Dijk but I think my player to watch is going to quite comfortably be the likes of Memphis Depay the second top goal scorer in Serie A or in League One sorry should I say after only Kylian Mbappe when it comes to the Netherlands national team on multiple occasions he does actually carry the nation in terms of goals assists set pieces Memphis Depay is the complete player and I think we'll see that once again at the Euros I believe after this I really believe after the Euros Memphis Depay will make a huge move to Barcelona Real Madrid or one of the top dogs I really do see that happening now the next team in Group C is going to be Ukraine now I would love to go for someone like Yomalenko I feel like he can be a decent striker from time to time but at the end of the day he's a bit too unreliable and I am going to have to go for Manchester City's Zenchenko who yes plays as a left back for Manchester City but does play as a midfielder for Ukraine I just believe his creative ability is really really good as I said maybe the numbers aren't quite there for the national team but I think that's just because the whole national team doesn't have as much quality as maybe Zinchenko does I think Zinchenko is a brilliant player and will be Ukraine's best player at the tournament now the third team is going to be Austria and Austria one or two brilliant players I feel like Alaba is a player that many people are going to look at obviously he is a world-class player once again is a player that does normally play fullback or center back but does play midfield for the national team. But I'm actually not going to go for Alaba. I am going to go for the likes of Marcel Sabitzer, who I think is actually terrific. For RB Leipzig this season, is a really, really brilliant attacking midfielder. He's been linked to some top clubs for years now. I think he is brilliant in terms of his attacking ability. Maybe his numbers aren't quite there for Austria, but we saw in that game versus England, he can really be a threat to the goalkeeper. And I think we'll see that in this competition and the final team in group c is going to be the likes of north macedonia now obviously i think this is probably one of the teams that not too many people expect too much from in this tournament and it's actually going to be my third player that starts as a left back for his club but plays as a midfield for his nation and it is going to be the likes of alioski who i think has such a rocket shot when he has a shot at goal i mean the goalkeeper genuinely has to be scared that a hole is going to go through his gloves alioski has such a powerful boot on him his creative ability is not bad did really well with leads this season and i believe genuinely will be a serious threat in this group i think he could be the kind of player to really mess this group around in terms of where north macedonia plays now moving on to my group d it's it's a really good group england croatia scotland and czech republic so obviously some brilliant players in that group and we start off with england now obviously i feel like i've got a huge england fan base so i think people are going to really wonder what i'm going to choose for this i feel like harry kane is the obvious one being the top goal scorer and assist maker in the premier league this season and obviously i feel like is going to make a huge move after the euros 218 maybe like a real madrid who knows, it would be interesting to see what happens, but I don't think he'll be England's best player at this tournament. I'm going to go for Jack Grealish, to be honest with you, because I'm pretty sure every single time I watch Jack Grealish play in an England jersey, I'm pretty sure he always wins man of the match. He's very tricky on the ball. Look, let's be honest, when you are watching at club level and Jack Grealish dives against your team, you'll complain, but you really will turn a blind eye when he does it for the England national team. But jokes aside, Jack Grealish is a brilliant player, and I do want you guys to remember that when I say these are going 
going to be the best players for this tournament. I don't necessarily mean that these are the best players for each nation. I just believe that these will be the best performers at this tournament. I think that Harry Kane will be the top scorer, or at least one of them in this competition. And I think Jack Grealish will play a huge part in that. Really tricky to defend and definitely one to watch. Now, next up, we've got the likes of Croatia. And to be honest, uh, look, Modric is a serious shout. I think there are really good players at Croatia, but I do feel like they are slightly passing their prime. But I do feel like Kramaric is probably going to be the player to watch for Croatia. I feel like no one actually talks about him because looking at Kramaric, he was one of the top goal scorers in the Bundesliga, but yet everyone will talk about Lewandowski, everyone will talk about Haaland, maybe even Andre Silva, um, they'll talk about Baghost, they'll talk about brilliant strikers, but no one actually talks about Kramaric. I think he's been brilliant in Bundesliga this season and I feel like he'll carry that over to Croatia, especially because he's got the likes of Modric, Perisic, creative players like that in the midfield. I feel like Kramaric will be brilliant in this tournament. Next up, we've got the likes of Scotland. And once again, I feel like Andy Robertson is a really good shout in that. Obviously, he's brilliant in the left mid kind of position for Scotland, but I'm going to go for Shea Adams. I don't necessarily think he's the best player in the Scottish national team, but I feel like if he plays well, Scotland will do well. That's how I feel. I mean, almost a 10 goal a season striker with Southampton this season in a very bad season for Southampton, but I think Shea Adams will be the difference maker between Scotland missing out on games and really hitting the next level. And the final team in Group D is going to be the Czech Republic. Once again, tiny bit of an obvious one, but it is going to be Suchek. Brilliant season for West Ham United, and genuinely, I put a lot of credit on him having so much success, or West Ham United having so much success qualifying for Europe this season. I feel like Suchek had a major role in that, scored a hat-trick in the World Cup qualifiers for Czech Republic. I feel like his midfield dominance will really carry through. Now, moving on to Group E, it is going to be Spain first. And you know what? I'd love to go for Gerard Moreno. I feel like he is a serious goal poacher that no one's really looking at. But to be honest, I'm, once again, I'm going to go a tiny bit out there and I'm going to say Emmerich Laporte. Now, obviously, there's no Real Madrid players in the Spanish national team. We've heard that many, many times, which at this point, I mean, they've had to call up six more people to this national team and still no Real Madrid players. There has to, like... Initially, I thought, nah, it's just a coincidence. There actually has to be a problem at this point. But no Sergio Ramos in the Spanish national team. And you know what? Emmerich Laporte, in his debut for the Spanish national team, I thought he looked brilliant in the centre-back position. He covered all his grounds. He covered everything he needed to. He covered all his bases. I feel like Laporte is a really good centre-back. And in terms of his defensive ability, I think he'll be huge for the Spanish national team. Once again, obviously not going to be top goal scorer. I think Moreno is going to be really good. I think they are brilliant midfielders. But I feel like everyone, all the outfield players, are going to do equally well for the Spanish team. But I do think Laporte is going to play a key role. Next team in Group E is going to be Sweden, which... Once again, no Zlatan Ibrahimovic breaks my Manchester United heart that I won't see Zlatan. King Zlatan himself. You know what? Zlatan can start his own Euros and just top every single stat in that. I think Zlatan would be quite happy with that. But in terms of the best player to watch, I would like to go for Forsberg. Obviously, another RB Leipzig player. I think he does really well. Obviously, he plays more for right mid as opposed to attacking midfield position for Sweden. But to be honest, his stats, although impressive for RB Leipzig, he doesn't always perform that well in, Swe in the Sweden. Um, jersey in my opinion so you know what my best player for sweden for this tournament is going to be alexander isaac who for real sociedad 17 goals this season is looking like a really good young striker option i think that he once again is one of those players who could make a big move after this tournament next up we've got the likes of poland which am i really going to beat the bush on this one it is going to be robert Lewandowski. i'd love to go for zielinski in the midfield position but Lewandowski, 41 goals in the bundesliga this season I mean, best striker in the entire world. You can't just, you just can't not go for Robert Lewandowski. Wasn't that brilliant in the 2018 World Cup, but I think Lewandowski, once again, just brilliant striker overall. And the final player in the group or the final team is going to be Slovakia. Now, yes, Skriniar had a very good season at Inter Milan and I think is going to be a player to watch for this team. I'm going to go for a bit of an old school golden oldie player in the likes of Marek Hamsic, obviously the former Napoli player who, I mean, his numbers at Napoli were pretty good. I feel like his numbers for Slovakia are really, really good. And I feel like just because he doesn't play in the top league anymore, not too many people watch him. But even in China, I feel like his numbers were really, really good. I feel like his creative outlet ability all over the pitch for Slovakia, I think will be a real game changer. As I said, I've kind of gone for him because I feel like no one talks about him anymore, but I definitely think people will mention him 
after this tournament. And guys, that takes us to Group F, the Group of Death, the toughest group in this competition. It's not going to be easy, but starting off with the first team, it is going to be Hungary, who, once again, is going to be starving after this competition. But I've gone for the likes of Dominic Sobosle, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Sobosle, from RB Salzburg, who, once again, is one of those young players. He's only like 20, 22 years old. He is looking brilliant. I think that he's going to make, once again, another player who can make a big move after this competition. He's looking really, really good this season for RB Salzburg. And once again, yeah, as I said, Hungary, I feel like many people are underestimating. Obviously, they've got Orban in the centre-back position, who's one of the best centre-backs in the Bundesliga this season. They've obviously got Gulaxi. I feel like this Hungary team is really going to be the game changer because if they beat Germany, if they beat France, if they beat Portugal in any of their games, they're going to cause a huge table upset. And I feel like so boss so so yeah so boss I, I'm I'm really having a tough time here guys. I feel like he is going to be the difference maker. His numbers have been absolutely incra uh, crazy for RB Salzburg. Now going on to the likes of Portugal Many people are going to expect me to say Ronaldo, but I'm going to go for Bruno Fernandes, to be honest. Once again, not because I'm a Manchester United fan, but because looking at Bruno Fernandes, I feel like in terms of both goals, assists, and set pieces, he'll play a crucial role for Portugal. I think Cristiano Ronaldo will, once again, like Harry Kane, be a serious contender for the Golden Boot Award for this competition. I feel like goals-wise, he is definitely going to be up. But guys, as I said, this doesn't necessarily mean it's the best player for that nation. I just feel like in terms of overall play, Bruno Fernandes will be the best player for Portugal. Now moving on to France, I am going to go for the likes of Kylian Mbappe. Another nation that is just full of so much talent, probably favourites to win this year. But Kylian Mbappe, once again, we saw at the 2018 World Cup versus some of the top nations, like the likes of Belgium, like the likes of just pretty much all the top teams. We saw how good... Kylian Mbappe was against Belgium, against Argentina, against any top team in the world. I feel like Kylian Mbappe could do it. I think his pace is obviously a huge factor of that. The top goal scorer in League One this season. To think that he is still so young, I feel like he's just going to run away as the best player for France in this tournament. Obviously, Benzema is a serious shout. I feel like he could once again be up there, but I do think it is going Mbappe's way. Which, guys, that takes us to the final team and the final best player for their nation. It is going to be Germany, and I am going to go for the likes of Serge Gnabry. Once again, is a player going into this tournament who has the best ratio of game of goals to games. I feel like he is a terrific player overall. Once again, hasn't been maybe as brilliant as he was in the 1920 season for Bayern Munich. That was obviously his best season. Wasn't as good this last season that's previously passed, but for Germany has been brilliant. 17 goals and 22 appearances for his nation, I believe. Brilliant player overall in terms of his creative ability, pace, goal scoring ability will 100% make a difference for Germany. And guys, that is it for today's video. That is who I believe will be the best player for every nation at Euro 2021. If you like this video, please do consider liking it down below. Can we please get it to 20? And if you guys like Euro content, I will obviously be doing a lot of Euro content over the next month. So please do make sure that you subscribe down below. Could we please hit 1,500 subscribers before the end of the Euros? That would be absolutely mad. But guys, uh, whether, whether most of these predictions will be right in terms of the best player for their nation, I feel like a lot of them probably will. But you know what? It is football. You can never truly predict what will happen in a beautiful game of football. But guys, I hope you end up enjoying the Euros. And once again, as I said, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Finn, FYNN. Cheers.